Holocaust survivor Elie Wiesel wrote, Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. The seeds of hate once planted can quickly grow from biased ideas to violence. If we choose not to speak up, hatred becomes normalized. Our actions matter. In a world where hatred becomes normalized, conditions are ripe for violence, and genocides like the Holocaust become possible. The Holocaust was the systematic, state-sponsored persecution and murder of six million Jews by the Nazi regime and its collaborators between 1933 and 1945. The Holocaust is an important lesson to learn to avoid other discrimination of other human beings from happening when you study how the Holocaust happened. It didn't just happen because one person, it took time to organize the liquidation of six million Jews. And this is why it's so important for future generations to learn about the Holocaust. Millions of others were also targeted and killed for racial, social, and ideological reasons. The Nazi party was a radical, far-right group that emerged in Germany following its defeat in World War I. Blaming Jews and other groups for Germany's problems, the Nazi party, led by Adolf Hitler, gained prominence while promising to pull Germany from the Great Depression of 1929 to 1930 and restore German power. In 1933, Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany. My name is Henry Friedman. I was born in Brody, Poland. Brody was quite a Jewish town. Before the Second World War, about half of the population was Jewish. It had a huge synagogue. Uh, it took a whole block. And I remember, like, Friday night or Saturday, walking to the synagogue. You could hear the choir in a distance. And as a kid, you know, I was always looking forward to it. My name is Lorene Nussbaum. I was born in Frankfurt, Germany, one of three sisters. We lived in Frankfurt for nine years, almost. I'm Steve Adler. Uh, I was born in Berlin, Germany. My family on my mother's side uh, had lived in Germany for many generations. I have one photograph showing my my mother was a baby, her mother, her grandmother, and her great-grandmother. And uh, that was, her great-grandmother was probably born there in 1825. So we were German. My name is Magda Shalom. I was born in Jur, Hungary. Hungary was always a very un anti-Semitic country. My sister, who just graduated from college and became a teacher, she couldn't get a job because they fired people, Jewish people, not hiring. Anti-Semitism is prejudice or hostile behavior toward Jews just because they are Jewish. Anti-Semitism had existed for centuries in Europe before the Holocaust. I remember the beginning of the Nazi times in Germany in 1933, and when the Stürmer, an awful weekly, 
was uh, shown at all the newspaper stands, and I remember that even as a young child, I was horrified at the caricatures they made of Jews in the Stürme. In 1935, Jewish children were no longer allowed to go to school with the other children because there was a rather large contingent of Jewish children in my elementary school, the Holzhausen Schule. They put us in a separate wing of the school, so we kept going to the same school, but a different entrance, and we were separated from the other kids. I was by that time a third grader, and I remember painfully that one of the girls that I used to walk to school with, a non-Jewish girl, would no longer walk to school with me. Between 1933 and 1941, the Nazis aimed to force Jews out of Germany by making life as difficult as possible. However, countries closed their borders, making escape nearly impossible. Kristallnacht started on the evening of the 9th of November, 38. Kristallnacht, the wave of anti-Jewish riots in Germany, Austria, and Czechoslovakia on the night of November 9th through the 10th, 1938, that was supported by Nazi leaders. Jewish shops were looted and synagogues were burned. The night became known as Kristallnacht, or the night of broken glass. My father was picked up on the morning of uh, November 10, 1938. I went to school in the morning with my brother, uh, but we were immediately sent home. There was a man in our living room with my dad, a Gestapo man, and uh, he took him away to Sachsenhausen concentration camp. An estimated 30,000 men were arrested, marking the first time Nazis detained Jewish people en masse simply because they were Jewish. He was gone for six weeks. And during that six-week time, I didn't know where he was. He came back on the 23rd of December, 38, uh, beaten up, smelling terribly, shaved head, and uh, he was a mess. My family decided to leave because uh, the, uh, the signs on the wall were clear enough that there was no future. And we, uh, we were certainly not the first ones. Even as we were playing a ball outside, one girl and then another girl, they all said, well, this is my last time, we are leaving. Some of them had relatives abroad, some of them had other relations that helped them. So even at this very young age, there were things that I was quite aware of. Kinder Transport, a series of rescue efforts that brought over 10,000 refugee children, mostly Jewish, to Great Britain from Nazi Germany between 1938 and 1940. My, my parents registered me with a, um, a program called Kinder Transport, uh, and that was uh, connected with the British decision to take 10,000 children out of uh, Germany, Austria, and Czechoslovakia. I was selected. My brother wasn't, although he eventually got out also. I was eight and a half years old when my mother and father put me on a train to Hamburg and then on a ship to London and uh, that's how I got out. The British let children come into England. Uh, most of them were orphaned effectively when they left because they never saw their parents again. I was one of the lucky ones. My father and mother both managed to get into England, uh, but for most of the others, that wasn't the case. Ich 
dass er mich in der Zeit verlassen hat. Denn nur euch allein ist er was alles zuzuschreiben. Wenn ihr damals gegangen wärt, niemals wäre Deutschland mehr gerettet worden. On January 20th, 1942, high-ranking Nazi officials met to discuss what they considered the Jewish problem. At this meeting, they planned the final solution, the systematic murder of Europe's 11 million Jews. The meeting became known as the Von Zee Conference. In May of 1942, uh, the Germans start ordering Jews to move in to a special part of Brody, which would be called the ghetto. And my father said, once they have us behind barbed wire, it's going to be very difficult for us to get out. We must do everything possible to stay outside the ghetto. Ghettos were often enclosed districts that isolated Jews from the non-Jewish people and from other Jewish communities. During the Holocaust, many Jews were forced to move into ghettos where living conditions were miserable. A young lady, she was 17 years old, Christian lady. Her name was Julia Simchuk. She worked in a police station in February 1942 when she overheard a conversation between the Gestapo and the Ukraine police that they're about to pick up my father. Early morning, she ran through deep snow to warn my father to run for his life. And because of this young Christian girl risking her life, I am alive today. In October, her parents risked their lives to take our family in. The house was kind of divided into half. Half of the house, the Simchuks lived in. The other half, they had animals. We were put above the animals. When morning came, we found ourselves in complete darkness because we were surrounded by hay, and our space was about the size of a queen-size bed. The people that took us in were not the elite. They were poor people. And we were cut down to one meal and would be sent up to us at night. And we would put it between our bodies pot of soup, mainly it was a pot of soup and a piece of bread for each one of us. Here I was, 14 years old, strong as a horse. I was so, so hungry. And all I would be able to do in this space is either lay down or sit up, because there was not enough room for me to stand up. Little did I know at that time that I will have to spend 18 months in this space without ever raising my voice, because all I could do is whisper. In May of 1942, we had to start wearing a yellow star, which we had to stitch on our garments. We went to school one day, and we were 15 students, and the next day we were 10 in a class. Uh, and of the five who did not appear in school, maybe four were rounded up and deported, and the one went into hiding. We never quite knew who went into hiding and who did not. Many Jews fought back with acts of defiance, from observing religious traditions and creating rescue networks, to even using armed resistance when possible. One night, a neighbor girl waited for me at the train station and said, don't be surprised because your parents and your brother is already back. You have to leave your home. So I went home, and he was, she was right, and I took a suitcase, and I put in the suitcase whatever I could. The next morning, they took us to a small apartment building, and 
a room, like a normal size bedroom. We were 10 people slept in that bedroom. Finally, one day they said they are going to take us again somewhere. And they put us in a cattle wagons and each section about 100 people. And we were just they packed in. But somehow, as I looked out the window, I saw my father standing outside. The Hungarian SS asked him, what is he doing? And he said, my family is on this train. Unfortunately, they dragged him. They started to beat him, kicked him, and they pushed him until he disappeared inside the building. And that was the last time I saw my father. Well, after traveling night and days, night and days, we were so glad that finally we arrived someplace and we can get out of the train and breathe some fresh air. On the 21st of June, I remember the date because that was my brother's birthday, 15 years old. We had to stand right away, five, five in a row, and then they yelled out, separate the woman and separate the man. Again, as we were standing in the line, we noticed that there's a chimney and the smoke smelled horrible, like burned flesh. So we asked the people, what is the smell? And they said, if tomorrow your mother, father, sister, brother, they will be taken to a crematorium and that's the smell you have. The Nazis and their collaborators ran thousands of concentration camps, forced labor camps, and death camps throughout Europe. I was for 10 days in Auschwitz and then they decided to take us someplace else. I was taken to Krakow, Plaszow, a terrible, terrible concentration camp. They gave us work that's just unbelievable. When the Russian army got closer to Krakow, so the Germans didn't want them to see a concentration camp. So they decided to take us away from over there. And we winded up again in Auschwitz. And I remember it was a very, very hot day, and we had to stand in a line. And this is the time when we got our tattoos, the numbers A dash one seven one seven zero. We were liberated. By that time, we were skeletons. I weighed about uh, 40 kilos, which is about 80 pounds or something. I couldn't walk. Neither could my brother, because our muscles were all atrophied. Finally, in July of uh, 1944, we came back to the city of Brody, which was 90% destroyed. 
uh, there were very few buildings left because the front line stopped there for three months. Out of about 9,000 Jews that lived in the city of Brody, we were less than 100 of us that survived. Genocide, acts committed with the intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. Genocide is an internationally recognized crime. When we came to the United States, they said, forget what happened. Now you're going to start a new life. Until the time came when the groups, the Holocaust deniers, and we looked at each other and we said, now it's time to start to talk. That's why I feel it's my duty that I still should talk about the Holocaust. Of the million, 600,000 Jewish children, uh, there only 10% survived. So uh, I feel myself being the voice of the children who didn't make it. I connected to your story because I seen the Holocaust picture first of Steve, and I was like, that's just a little boy. Why is he there? I can see the pain in your eye when you take the picture. The image that I had in my head and the story that you were telling me, they all just went together. If you see somebody next to you and they're struggling, you just help them with one thing, that's changing the world. I'm struggling, but if my life get better, it'll be better. Then I'm just gonna be there to show the kids, you can go through hard times, but you can also get through them. Mm -hmm hearing from you and now you're here sitting here talking to me you know it's just like so encouraging to me that's why i do this it's it's very important to me i tell the story because i believe like julia one person to save my life one person can make a difference and all i hope is one person will make the right decision and save another life because one life is as important as saving the world. Uh, my name is Joshua Gortler. Uh, I was born in a very small town known as Tomaszow Lubelski in Poland. I'm Susie Sherman. I was born in 1935, and my family was from Karlsbad, Czechoslovakia. I'm Peter Dam. I was born in Berlin, Germany. My name is Bertie Marson and I was born in Amsterdam, Holland. Right. My name is Eva Tannenbaum Cummins, and I'm from Berlin, Germany. My name is Peter Metzelar, born in Amsterdam, Holland. My name is Frida Zuri. I was born in 1929 in Moravska Ostrava, Czech Republic. Uh, my name is Hester Kuhl, and I was born in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. My name is Bob Hershkowitz, and I was born in Belgium, 1938. One day, not, not too long from now, there will be a new person standing up here. It will be you. Change begins with me. Change begins with me. Change begins with me. I'll tell you with the we are. Change begins with me. Change begins with me. Change Begins With Me is born out of the idea that if people stand up for others, then it can create a ripple effect felt all around the world. Change Begins With Me. Zmina Pushnaitz's man. Change Begins With Me. Badla mere saath shuru hota hai. Change Begins With Me. Change Begins With Me. Change Begins With Me. Cambio empieza conmigo. Change Begins With Me. Change begins with me, Espero Balamia. I will carry on the stories of Holocaust survivors because they teach us the dangerous places hate can lead and the importance of speaking out against prejudice instead. I commit to making sure that the people around me know that their voices matter, that I support them, and that I will be here to stand up for them in the future.
I commit to remembering the lessons of history, but learning from them instead of just about them. As I go out into new situations and I meet new people, I commit to coming with an open mind and an open heart, ready to listen and ready to learn so that we can create real and impactful change.